the Iowa 80. Well, that was up. The Iowa 80, the largest truck stop in America. Have you uh have you been yeah. up have you been up this way before? Yeah. Oh, okay. When so, I first saw a drive. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is stay a minute. Just take your time. The clock is ticking. So stay. All you have to do is stay. Yeah. We um I I, I don't think it sucks. I don't think it sucks. I really don't. I, th I think it's all right, though. You know what I'm saying? Bill O'Reilly says it sucks. Well, I don't think the Lockout Men podcast show sucks. You know what I'm saying? We the bomb over here on YouTube, you know? What's going on, everybody? Lockout Men. And I am back two times. That's how I do it. As a matter of fact, I think I got another one lined up after this. It's, I, I don't know how I do it, man. I don't know how I do it. It's, I, I just do it. That's all. Yo, welcome back to the Lockout Men podcast show. I am your host, Lockout Men. And uh, right now, I'm hanging out up at the Iowa 80 truck stop. Yes, sir. The largest truck stop here in America. Or at least that's the, that's the claim. They do got plenty of parking. I can tell you that much. There's it, no shortages of parking. That's what I love. I love a truck stop that has parking, adequate parking. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, today I got another interview for you guys. This gentleman right here is, is, is coming back to talk to us again. You guys may know him. He came on before and and talk to us before and i will bring him in but if you like content like this don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell for more you know what i'm saying and that all button you know what i'm saying you got to get that all button because if you don't you just don't know when i'm going to pop up i could pop up anytime hell i could pop up overnight i'm just saying Y'all hit that all button. Y'all y'all can know when I pop up. Let me know. If you like uh if you like to support the channel. All right, Kim Possible, you gotta cool down. If you like to support the channel or support myself, you know, hook a brother up with some coffee or something like that or something to drink, you can do that. Hit me up in the cash app, dollar sign, lockout man, or the coffee app, which both of them is in the description below. All right. Well, in today's uh podcast interview, I am gonna welcome to the stage. Welcome back, Orzel Johnson. Thank you for to having. the show. Orzel, man, the Iowa 80 truck stop up here in uh, Wycott, Iowa, man, is one of the largest truck stops in America. Have you have have you been up here and what was your experience uh, coming up here to this truck stop? <laughs> yeah, I've been up there uh, when I first started driving. Um, it was like five years ago, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's real nice up there with you. Real nice. Okay, okay. Well, never seen nothing like it. Now, when you started, when you started driving, uh, uh, and we're gonna get into all of that. But bef when you started driving, did you, uh, did you, ever knew that it was a truck stop of this magnitude in anywhere in the no. United States? No, I ain't know. So, uh, my trainer he had, uh, told me about it. So when you walked up in when when you walked up in there, what was what came to mind when you first walked up in here? Oh, when I first walked in there, I'm like, I'm gonna have this one like that. <laughs> <laughs> any any anything else that come to mind? Because I, I can tell you when I came up in here, I was I was flabbergasted. To be for real, I mean, yeah. I, I went over to the uh, now I know the the uh, Joplin Forty Four truck stop, and I'm I'm thinking these two might be owned by the same people, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure yeah, if, if if they are because every time I go in there, I always want to ask, but I never get a chance to because you know I'm I'm in me I'm in and out. You know what I'm saying? I go in. Uh, right. People watch. 
and all that good stuff and then bounce back out. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to go in and get me another T-shirt because every time I come up this way, I always get me one of their Jamboree T-shirts. I never I never get a chance to come to their Jamboree. They, they have one every year, but I think this year, I think this year was canceled because of COVID, but they have a jamboree here every year that, you know, trust uh, truckers could come here, have a good time, eat, listen to the bands and, you know, and just be a, and just be appreciated. You know what I'm saying? And this, Word. this trust stop right here does that, man. Um, again, uh, you, like I said, is, is there any, any, anything else that you can, that you could give about this trust stop, man? I mean, it gotta be more. Well, it's just... been so long, so I can't I can't remember uh, everything about the truck stop. So it's been so long. I only been there one time. Mm -hmm. So, well, whenever yeah. you get, well, whenever you whenever you get a chance to come back and uh, go over the road again, you you make sure that this is one of the place that that you gotta at least stop at. This one. And Joplin Forty Four. I, I think you gotta. I think you gotta stop at both of them to really appreciate uh, how this trust stop is for truckers, though. For real, I, this this trust stop right here actually caters to truckers. You know what I'm saying? As far as as far as the as far as the amount of parking here, I mean, there's no shorter spaces here. For real, you can come here. During the day, you can come here in the middle of the night and you can still find a good parking spot. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, man. Um, this this is a this is a pretty yeah, good, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do that one day. This uh this is a pretty good space, man. This is a pretty good space. Um, uh, Orzel, man, let's start. Uh let's start with your story, man. Um, how you got started in trucking and how's your journey been so far, man? Uh, well, I, I always wanted to be into trucking, but I ain't know how to go about it. <laughs> so one day, <clears throat> then my brother was like, we were trying to find jobs or whatever, and then my brother came to me. He was like, man, let's just go to the trucking, man. He had found the ad of uh, CR England on the uh, website, and he was like, man, let's just go ahead and do this. We ain't do no research or anything. We just hopped into it. So uh, we called CR England, and uh, they sent us down here to uh, Open Life, Alabama, to do our testing and stuff. And that's how it started. And then I was on the road with them for uh, like off and on six months because there was like a lot of stuff going on with them. And uh, left them, went to Swift, left Swift, went to. Uh, uh, Snyder. I was with Snyder for a year. All right. And then I just came off the road because I got tired of uh, Georgia traffic, so I just got off the road. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's let's back up there for a little bit for a little bit for a little bit, there, guy. You you uh you you okay. said you you said fuck it you you did and this is you and your brother so let me let me uh, let me interject right. for a second so both of y'all got your license yes so both of y'all got your license from CR England yes all right so you 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 just said fuck it you just went on the internet and just typed in trucking companies that are pay for that are pay for your license. Out of all all the trucking companies that that does that, you know, Swift, Prime, uh, CRST, and the rest of them, what made you chose CR England? Well, my brother chose CR England. And I was just following behind him because he, my brother, like twelve years older than me, so I just followed behind him. I ain't like we like I said, we ain't do no research, anything. We just hopped into it. All right. So so before so before you got into trucking, man, what was uh what was you was what was you what was you doing? Because you you said that, you know, y'all y'all needed to work and obviously trucking brings you to work. But what what was you doing beforehand? Uh I was working at a couple of uh, warehouse. Oh, okay, okay. And at, yeah. at at that at that time, you 
didn't even, even though you saw trucks that came in and out of the air all the time, but you just said you, you ain't had no aspirations for trucking until your brother came to you and like, yo, let's just do it. No, I actually was already thinking about doing trucking. I just didn't know how to go about it. So when my brother came to me and was like, man, let's just get into trucking, I was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> you say you was Cause I already, Because I already been like, think about trucking like ever since I was a teenager. I was like, because I see a lot of trucks pass through. I was like, oh, they must make a lot of money because I used to see like a, whole lot of nice trucks, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like back in the day. And I was like, oh, they must make some nice money, so I'm going to get into that, you know what I'm saying, go travel the world, see the world, and stuff like that. And then, like, I didn't know how to get into it, so my brother, he started doing some research or something like that, and he was like, man, let's do a truck. So I was like, okay, cool. I've right. been through it. All right, so both of y'all was – was both of y'all on the phone at the same time with with the recruiter to find out what what CR England had to offer? Yeah. So what was what was that conversation like back then with you and your brother on the phone talking to the recruiter that was just that was just trying to get you to come to them and 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 drive for them. Well, the conversation was was cool. It was crazy because I had just had a baby, and I had told them that uh, I couldn't do over the road because I just had a baby or whatever. And they were like, "Okay, cool. Uh, you'll be at home every weekend and stuff okay. like that." I'm okay. like, okay, "Okay, I can work with it." Okay. But when we got finished with school, it was a totally different story. I was like, "Man, no, can't do that." Mm. I was like, I just had a baby, so I couldn't do that. I couldn't go over the road and uh, miss everything that came with uh, my first child. So I couldn't do it. Now, listen here. Did 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 they jigaboo you? Did they sugarcoat? Yes. Did they did they yes. did they sugarfoot? Yes. So to the seat. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. What you was about they, to say? They sugarcoat it. I said they took cold everything to the teeth. So they 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 hoodwinked you. You've been bamboozled. Yeah. You've been right. set astray or led astray. Right. Mm. I think that I think that's pretty much what happened to me. You know, when I when I when I talked to the recruiter, recruiter was telling me all that good stuff. And they was they she was right. at she was at my school, you know, I'm I'm sitting up in, you know, I'm, man, listen, I'm 45 years old, feeling like I'm back in fucking kindergarten the way she was talking. I was, oh, oh, pick me, pick me, oh, and I, you know, and then when I get when I get to orientation, I'm I'm still I'm still giddy, you know, giggity giggity, and all like that, and I was like, then they was like, you know, separating people on how they how we was going to go out so you know a couple of guys was dedicated they they came in to do dedicated uh a couple of guys came and they're dead and don't get it twisted uh you uh us express dedicated is their dollar accounts all right is their dollar that that's mainly what they was having a whole bunch of people coming in for they they had dedicated with walmart uh, Major, Target, uh, C C V C E V A or some shit like that. But their main dedicated was the dollar accounts. So when they was, you know, they was, you know, splitting everybody up. You know, uh, such and such, you're dedicated. You're dedicated. You're dollar dedicated. Then when they came to me, they was like, "You're over the road." I right, wait over the road. Oh wait. Oh, Hold on right quick. I I told the I told the recruiter that I I wanted to be dedicated. Y'all got a Walmart near me. Y'all got a y'all got a y'all got a Walmart. Uh you know what I'm saying? Y'all got a uh y'all got a Major. I I you know, I I want to be home every week. Oh no. Uh they All was right. like they was like, "Oh, okay, you you want dedicated. All right. We'll switch you from over the road to uh the Family Dollar account." I was like, "No." No. Well, first I was like, hold on. First I was like, oh, okay. 
Okay. But we just want to let you know that the, the family dollar is is driver assist. Uh, What do you mean by driver assist? Well, see this video right here? They showed us a video of the driver assist for the dollar accounts. And after it went off, I was like, no, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, where, what, where, where are you from? I was like, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, well, the only thing that we got available in Cleveland is the dollar account or OTR. I was like, that's not what the lady told me. She said that you guys had an abundance of 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 things for me to choose from. And I choose right. to go with Walmart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And they was like, no, no, you uh you either choose the dollar account or you choose OTR. Or we can part ways right here. They was, they, the, 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 the motherfucking orientation people was smart as fuck. They was like, no, nah, yeah. you either you either do this or you do that. And I was like, man. So I, you know, at, at that time, I, I didn't have no experience like how I know now. I know what I'm looking for now and know how to talk to these recruiters and get what I want. But back then, nah. So they hooked me. Right. They so they hook not just you, but your brother too, huh? Yep. All right. So back then, how how long ago? How long ago was this when you uh, started with CR England? Oh, uh, it was five years ago. Oh, five years ago. Okay. So yeah. Did they? I will say yeah. Now, right now, I know they they got uh. What do you call it? They they got trainers training two at a time. Did they did they have that back in the day when you started? No, nah, well, with me, they only had me by myself. Uh -huh. But my brother, they had him and another guy trying. They were trying to both of them at the same time. Okay, so so your brother, <laughs> so he uh he uh train with somebody else how did your brother did your brother tell you stories about about that what what did he what was his experience if if he was if he told that to you man his experience was terrible <laughs> <laughs> so he said the, the trainer that was training them he didn't want to drive at all <laughs> and he had to do all the drive see that's that him that's and the other guy that's that lazy shit right there because, you know, the trainer. Yeah, he was like, he wasn't training. He wasn't doing no training. He was just sitting back and letting them swap out. <sighs> See, that trainer is getting paid, is getting paid by the, getting paid like a fat rat. You know what I'm saying? He's getting, right. he's getting your brother's miles as well as the other dude's miles. So was, did he, did he mention anything about, you know, did they stop? Did they rest? Did they do it like a team thing? How how did it go for him? I think it uh I think it went like a team thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. I didn't know he had told me uh they left him in California for like a week and uh he was just basically stuck out there. He had called CR English so he'd get a room and Trying to see if uh, when this trainer will come pick him up. He said his, his uh, experience with CR Ingle was terrible. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He, the, 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 the trainer left him in, in California? Yep. The fuck happened? Like. Pull, pull it off. Wow. Wow. And he had to, he, and he had to call CR, I mean, CR England to let them know, like, hey, bro. Yo, your trainer left me out here. What the fuck? That's that's what it Word. was like, man. That's crazy. Word. That's crazy. Now, what was your experience with? Now, you was solo with with your trainer. So, what was your experience? Yeah. What was your experience? I had some good trainers. You know what I'm saying? I was. I thank the Lord that I did because <laughs> I would have like cut the cut the book in they truck. But I had some good trainers. You know what I'm saying? They. I had my back end already like down pat the whatever because like when I was in school mm -hmm. and uh they had gave us like a practice run when the first set had went to go take their test or whatever, so they just gave us a practice run to give us a feel a 
around the field or whatever. And then, like, I badged him up, like, the first time I hopped in the truck. And he was like, oh, you meant for this? So, uh, with the trainers I had, they just gave me a, a little more pointers of what to do mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But I had some pretty good trainers. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, you – now, at one point, you said that – uh. You know, you only stayed with them for a month because of bullshit. Of course, what was told to you wasn't yeah. wasn't actual factual fact. You know what I'm saying? So, what was uh, what was it like when you decided to uh, when you decided to leave? Did you 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 told your fleet manager what? Well, I was actually we had me and my brother had just got finished with our training, and uh, we were going to get our truck. And uh, we were going to get out of the truck. And the lady was like, okay, y'all going over the road. And I was like, no, we ain't signed up for that. And she was like, oh, well, that's the only thing we have. And I was like, well, I'm gone because I have a new baby and I can't be over the road like that. And then y'all talk about being out on the road for like three or four months and then come back to the house and we're going to be at the house for two days. And then the lady had the nerve to tell me, oh, well, you knew about that before you came to the church. No. I was like, no, I did because they told me something totally different. And I explained to them that I had a new baby, so I can't be gone like that. Now, you know what, man? Now, I – listen, the motherfucking fleet managers, I, I got to admit, that I, I, had some pretty, I had some pretty damn good ones. I, I, had, uh, I had some issues – well, yeah, I had some good ones, but I had an issue with U.S. Express – uh, I had an issue with her um, when I went over to JNR Schwugel. Matt was just fucking awesome, but then he left, and then I had a I had a bullshit one, which you know forced me to make the decision to leave, like I did. And then when I got over to uh, over to my 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 recent uh, company, it was just a beautiful thing. You know, you get that rapport with. Your fleet manager, man, it just makes it just makes working for the company smooth. You know what I'm saying? You know, you 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 talk to me like I'm a human being, like I'm a grown ass man. I'm not your kid, so you don't talk to me right. like your kid. So you know, so I guess the 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 way that it was with with you and your fleet manager really didn't mesh well, huh? No. <laughs> and I don't even think that was my fleet manager. I think that was just a person that was signing the trucks out when we got finished with uh with school. All right. So after being out on, over the road for a month, you got your you got your license. You're 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 official now. Uh, once you found out that they was gonna put you over the road, you decided to you you decided to bounce right then and there. Right. So and did, then I had to pay for my own bus ticket. <laughs> wow! <laughs> of course they're gonna. Of course they're gonna do that. With man. no, with no money, I'm not getting no money coming in for real because like I, I just started, it, and then like when I was in school, I was getting paid for that. So the money when I first started, I had to send all of it back home. So uh, my girlfriend at the time to take care of the household and stuff like that. So. I was on the left with like a hundred dollars on the road. Wow. See this now listen, man. This is now I know you know better now, but this is for you young jacks that's thinking about coming out here, man. I always said to at least have maybe about three, at least three hundred dollars on you in cash and at least uh, a credit card. You know what I'm saying? Now I know a lot of us I know a lot of us black people don't have good ass credit. I'm one of them, but there is credit card companies out there that that fucks with bad credit. I mean, they 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 got fucked up rates, but at least they'll give you like a three hundred or five hundred dollar credit limit. With that, you can right. rent you a car because you can't without a credit card. You won't be able to rent a car, and you'll be fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So at least come out with at least a little bit of change. You know what I'm saying? But of course, you know this is you know this is you guys like me. You know we fresh freight. Uh, f- uh, uh, we're fresh faces in this game, not knowing, you know, not knowing what it is and how to play it. 
You know what I'm saying? So did you and your brother both right. left at the same time, or did your brother decide to stay? Yeah, we both lived at the same time, but uh, I want to say like two weeks, he went back. But I ain't go back because, like I said, I had my baby, so uh, I was just missing my baby with her. So he went back, and uh, and he got his own truck, and he started back doing like doing that. Okay, okay. So out of the five years, man, you sound like you said you've been with like what three, four other companies. You've been with Swift. You've been with uh, uh, five altogether. How how throughout yeah. through, throughout that throughout that little that that little five year mark? How many miles you think you 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 accumulated out here? Man, I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> Because I only keep up with, I can't see. I know, right? It's kind of hard to because, keep up. Because, like, the last the last three years have been uh, dedicated. Oh, okay, okay. So, when you came, when you left, you came back home, you know, I, I guess you felt some kind of way. But, uh, mm. but what, what company, what company you started to reach out to, to, to get, you know what? What you want for you and your family? Oh, uh, I had reached out to Snyder. Okay, okay. So Snyder came. When I came back. Snyder came to the yeah, rescue. I, uh, yeah, that's when uh, I was with them for like a year and a half. Okay. Uh, with Swift, I was with them. I was with them long either. I was with them for like three months. Cause I seen how they would treat my trainer, so I was like, "Ooh, no, I ain't gonna be able to do it." Oh, <laughs> uh, you had to go back. You had to go back out training with Swift. Yeah. What? Wait, you? Because they, they said I didn't have enough experience to uh, get a truck of my own, so I had to go back and train with a trainer with Swift. How How long you was out with him, and what was the experience with that? Oh. Uh, I was out with him for like three months, and it was great. You know what I'm saying? He he was uh, cool, real cool. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he was giving me a couple pointers about Swift and stuff like that. And just Swift, when he had his own truck, so when uh, a rock had hit his uh, windshield, his radiator, oh, radiator. he had called okay. Swift and told them that he was his uh, radiator was leaking. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they were like, okay, well, we're going to give you a route back to home so you can take your truck to the shop and then you can get sent back out. Okay. So okay. you're like, okay, cool. So the next morning, they supposed to be getting him a route to his hometown, but they gave him another route going to California. So he was like, I'm not going to do that. I just sit there and told them that. My uh, radiator is leaking, and I'm not going to keep on buying the coolant to put in the radiator, and they're going to leak back out. That's a waste of money. Mm-hmm. So he drove down to Nashville, to his hometown, and he had told me, he was like, I ain't going to tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to give you an option. Mm-hmm. He was like, i give you a bus ticket to the house, mm-hmm. and uh, when my truck gets finished, um, and, uh, uh, when my truck gets finished, finish, or you just let me know what you want to do right now. I was like, man, well, I see how they doing you. I was like, man, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the house. I'm, I'm just going to find something else. Mm. <laughs> Damn. They, 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 and they, he, they, after that, he ain't stay with Swift long. Damn. You you ain't even give you ain't even give Swift a even chance, man. So Snyder, right. Snyder's next on the, on, on, uh, up on the block, man. And I, I think with Snyder, yeah. how, how was the orientation with Snyder, man? Because I, I hear orientation with Snyder is like boot camp. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Well, talk, talk, like. talk me, because, like, talk most me of the through people it. That, okay, uh, you had to get up at a certain time. You, if, you down, if you're not downstairs, they get your hotel room. Mm-hmm. If you're not downstairs at a certain time, uh, they will call you absent. For you to hop on the uh, the van and go to the building in Snyder and in Georgia. Mm-hmm. So if you don't, if you miss that time, you gotta wait all day till that evening to do orientation or something like that. Mm. And then, like, if you miss a couple days, they just send you home. Mm. 
So what I if, say like two days. If, they, if you miss two days, they send you home. So what about uh what 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 about what about this stuff that I'm hearing doing the orientation? They make you guys do tests and all like that. Y'all gotta y'all gotta test out. Now I know yep. you gotta test out in the truck. I know I know you gotta you know do a road test and stuff like that. But I'm hearing that you 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 guys gotta do like like arithmetic tests. Like y'all in fucking school again. Yep. Like what what was that? Yep. Oh, uh, I guess they're trying to see if your mind sharp. I guess. Oh, uh, okay. it, it, so when you get in the truck, that you can already, they can see that. Uh, if you already know the stuff in the truck, or you got to start back over to go back to school for it. Yeah, but let me ask you this: What the hell math got to do with us driving the truck? Just, I don't even know. I'm just saying. <laughs> what, what I the said hell? the same thing when I got the test. What the hell? Because somebody told me, like, yeah, we had to do, like, you know, I understand we could, you know, like, basic arithmetic and shit like that. You know, I'm I'm not a mathematician. If I don't have a calc, you know, if I don't have a calculator, then, you know, I, you know, one plus one is two, two plus two is four. I get that shit. But when we start going right. into, like, you know, like, like half plus half and then you got to multiply the bottom and then cross over to the top. Yeah, I, I got a problem with that. <laughs> I have a problem right. with that, man. Man, throughout this yeah, whole th what, what's up with that? Throughout this whole journey for you, man, has it has it been relatively smooth? If not, man, what's what's some struggles along the way that you that you encountered? Oh, uh, the struggles I I, I have is uh the money situation, you know what I'm saying? Like, every time that you go to another job, you got to, like, start all over, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it just the money situation. And then, like, I had bought my first car uh, three years ago, and then I was having problems with that, and this supposed to be a, a brand-new car. Mm -hmm. I, like, kept on getting flat tires for some reason and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it was basically just the money situation that really made it hard. Mm. So, so at that time with Snyder, uh, during the during the Snyder time, was you able to take the truck home or anything like that? No, I had I was on the um, Home Depot account. Oh, so okay. the Home Depot there's uh, down here. Uh, we parked the truck at their location, and then we hopped in our car and we went home. Oh, okay, okay, and that's when you saying that the money situation wasn't right to help you keep your keep your vehicle up to get back and forth to work right okay okay man orzel man listen i i, I got a i i i know you've been in the game for five years you you know you experienced uh a lot of stuff out here man but uh you know truckers out here we we get no kind of respect none for whatever reason, you know what I'm saying? None on the streets, none on the none from the shippers and receivers, none from the truck stops. Hell, even none from the none from our own drivers, man. Our our our, our own that we supposed to consider our own. What do you think about what do you think right. about all of that, man? Why why do you think that is? I don't know. Uh, I just think like people don't have no patience at all. And they think this we got TDLs that we supposed to have the patience, you know what I'm saying? But everybody else don't have the patience. Yes. Like, say for instance, we go to the shipper and we get there uh, like five minutes early, you know what I'm saying? Just to make sure that we there on time. They still gonna make us late because they like, okay, well, see, he here, like, we don't care. Mm. Or if we get there late, they want a bitch to complain about us being late. Like, I just don't get it. And then the people on the, on the, uh, the roads and freeways, they don't, everybody don't have no patience at all. Mm -hmm. They think these trucks go 100 and 150 miles per hour, but we can only be governed at 63, 65, mm -hmm. and 7. So do you think, do, do you think uh, with all that, with all that you, that you just said, do you think that it turns us to be some rude motherfuckers out here? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> quit fast. You say quit fast in a hurry. Man, right. 
That's that's uh that's that's crazy, man. That that's crazy that it, you know that we don't that that we don't get no type of love out here, especially from the shippers and receivers, man. You know we, you right. know with COVID going on right now, it's already making it bad enough that we can't even go in there and use the bathroom. Like you know, yo, we, we want you to use that right. porta, we want you to use that porter potty outside. And I'm like, man, come on, bro, really, man, like. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, man. Overall, man, has 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 trucking been has trucking been easy for you? Uh, yeah, it been easy for me now because I know what to do, what to look look out for. Uh, my bagging down pad. So yeah, it's it's it, it's cool right now. Man, now let me ask you this, man. Now you know we face danger every day. You know what I'm saying? I mean. You don't have uh you you don't know what the day will bring. You know what I'm saying? What right. how how do you get the day started and what are some of the safe practices that you that you practice? Oh uh, I get my day started. Uh, I just, just get on the floor and start running, you know what I'm saying? Uh I try I I'm like very cautious. Like I'm in the car, I'd be very cautious, you know what I'm saying? I look at everything uh, that's around me, that in front of me and stuff like that to make sure I got to pick up on it real fast so I can react real fast to it. <laughs> all right, all right. What about, uh, all right, so, you know, we're going to switch gears a little bit. You know, as you guys know, this is uh this is my man, Orzel Johnson. You know, he's the he's the truck driver. That found the young, uh, I'm going to say young lady, you know, she was 53 years old, but she was still young. He was the one that found the young lady that was on, uh, on, uh, on the Alabama highway. And unfortunately she was, uh, you know, she passed when he found her over there. Take us, take us again, take us back to that morning, uh, when you was on your way to work. Uh, I was, uh, I had just came back from um, Kentucky, and um, I was on 5920, um, and I was coming up on SL 118, and uh, I had got over to the left lane because I thought that the uh, truck that was coming on on 118 was going to get on the freeway. So when I had did a double take, and I saw uh, the person laying on the ground and I seen that they were parked in uh, the emergency lane. So I was talking to uh, my co-worker on the phone because we keep each other woke at night. And uh, I was like, it looks like somebody laying on the ground. And she was like, you lying. And I was like, no. So I just pulled my truck over, hopped out of it. I ain't run to the truck because if somebody was like back there, I ain't want to start them. So I just walked down there to them. And then when I saw uh, them laying on the ground, I ran up and asked them whether it was all right. Uh, I ain't getting no response or whatever. So I'm just looking around, and um, I knocked on the door to see if somebody was going to come to the door. Then somebody comes to the door. So I asked the lady again whether she was okay. Still no real, I mean, still no answer. So I called 911 and told her what was going on. And I thought she had slipped and fell off the catwalk, but come to find out that she really didn't. All right. It was a homicide. So when we spoke at that time, we me and you both thought it was an accident. But um but All as right. we as time went, as time went, uh time went on and we found the uh, hold on right quick. As time went on and we found the uh, you know, we got a little bit more information. Uh, this comes by way of CDL Life, uh, suspect charged in brutal, brutal murder of a female uh, truck driver. Uh, come to find out that this young lady has been killed by a dude named Levest Charles Levester Gibson. He's 39 years old. He's charged with the murder in connection of the death of 53-year-old Semi driver Christine Summers. Uh, it says here in the article that uh, that Summers was 
was out. She was talking to her husband. She thought she might have hit something. She got out. She called 911 to, you know, check out the damage. But while at the time that she was on the phone with 911, this guy, uh, Gibson, attacked her while she was still on the phone with the 911 operator. Uh, motives for the attack is unknown. Of course, the body was found by uh, was found by you, and um, and yeah, we we uh, again, you know, rest in peace to uh, uh, to the young lady. But you know, we we thought when we talked before, we 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 actually thought it was a was an accident. She slipped and fell, but this right. this, this guy came out of this guy came out of the cut. Came out of the cut and 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 took her life from her, and uh, you know it's right for no reason. For no reason. Uh, I mean, it was a black guy, unfortunately, you know. But what? When did you find out that uh, it wasn't an accident and it it was it turned into a homicide? Um, I found I found out that day uh, that evening when. Uh, a uh, reporter had called me to uh, get my side of the story. <laughs> but she was like, well, what you think it was? You think it was an uh, incident? And I was like, yeah, I think she's a uh, slip and fail. And she was like, no, they said it was a homicide. And I was like, what? I was like, oh, man, they, they can't be true. Right. She was like, yo, that's what they said. Right. So, like I said, when me and you was talking about the situation, uh, it just sounded like an accident to me. I mean, uh, I couldn't I couldn't fathom somebody actually getting out of their car to go and fuck with this young lady. You know what I'm saying? But right. um but yeah, they 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 said in the article that uh that Gibson was wanted in connection with the homicide. They uh, took him to jail. He also attacked two other police officers uh, when they right. when, when they took him to jail. They found him. They said they took him into custody within an hour of the murder by the Hueytown Police Department after they received a call about and, a man standing in the they, street. They, they... So this so. I'm 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 flabbergasted, bro. Like this dude, right. this dude was like, what what he was doing? They say he was standing in the street. So what? He was walking on the highway and he just attacked this lady for nothing. Mm -hmm. Did was there any? I don't know. You notice you you notice that she still had her flashlight in her hand. So do you think it, No, her flashlight was laying on the side of her. Oh, the flashlight was on the okay. So the flashlight was standing on I mean laying on the side of her. Do you think that it could have right. been a could have been a robbery or anything? You said her doors was locked, so Yeah, her doors were locked. Did they mention anything about her still having her keys or anything? Uh, um, she had like a uh, spare key, and uh, it was laying on the side of her also. So he, when the officer came up, I asked you before the officer did go inside of the truck. Did the officer right? He didn't. He didn't want to open the door. Did the officer see anything out of the ordinary? Like, was the truck ransacked or anything uh, like that? The only thing he was looking for was her ID. Oh, okay. And um, at the time when he was uh, looking for her ID, I had asked him what well, I was okay to leave because I still had to drop my load off because I um uh, only had like forty some minutes left on my time clock. So I had asked him what well, I was okay to leave, and he was like, "Yeah," and uh, somebody gonna call me and uh, ask me some questions. Oh, okay. Okay. Did did anybody did did the cops did call you back? What did they call you back? What was the what was the interview with that? Um. Uh, yeah. The detective called me like two days later, and uh, he was asking me the same 
question like uh, what happened, what did I see, and stuff like that. Did, did I see anybody around the truck? And uh, he just got my information. All right, all right. Was you was you uh, was you able to? Because you know, like I said before, I was gonna, I was reaching out to the family. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm assuming that was her, her son in in the Facebook post. I'm not sure, but I, I tried to reach out to him. You know what I'm saying? And then there's her, her husband. I, I try to type him. You know, try to Google him, Facebook him, and all that stuff. And I'm still trying to, you know, go to connections and stuff like that. But has anybody from the family got a hold of you? Well, uh, Elena had um, got in touch with me. She said uh, she was her daughter, and um, she drives trucks also. Okay, okay. We're gonna after after we get offline. I'm gonna I'm gonna need that information. You still got it? Yeah, I still have. All right. After we get offline, man, I'll get all that from you and uh and give uh give her a uh, a shout out right quick. But uh yeah man rest in peace to that young lady. Young lady as I said, you know, this is this is a uh a, a very a very dangerous job for all. You know what I'm saying? You know, not just not just lady truckers, but it's uh it's it's a dangerous job for for us as well. You know what I'm saying? Uh but let me ask you this. Um, you know, it's it's more so for, you know, like for females, because, you know, females, female drivers get a lot of shit thrown after them. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. get a lot of they got a shit. They got a lot of shit thrown after them more so than us. You know what I'm saying? Right. What advice do you have for, you know, not only females, but for males, too? What advice do you have for us to, you know, to, to look out, you know, to be again to be safe out here uh basically just uh look at your surroundings uh when you when you stop and uh make sure you that you're safe you know what i'm saying uh i really really can't say more just look at your surroundings because mm. i know like females they begin hound all the time by us guys anyway you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so uh, I, I really don't. I really don't know what to say about that. But just uh, make sure you okay and look at what's around. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. With so many people thinking that trucking, you know what I'm saying, thinking that trucking is a skillless and a mindless job, you know, they look at us as as slackers that we don't know no better or nothing like that. Why so many? Why do you think so many people? Who are not in this business, man? Not not in the business of trucking. Look down on us truck drivers. That's a good question. I, don't, I really don't know why. <laughs> because uh, I guess because they they mad because they can't see the world like that, like we can or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we get paid to go across country and see different stuff. And some people, I guess, mad because they can't do that. They got to spend their money to go cross country and stuff like that. So I, I really can't answer that question. Okay, that's what's up. Orzel, man, uh, you say you've been with uh, with five companies, including the company with, where you at right now. Out of all the trucking companies right. that's that's out here, why did you choose the company where you at now? Um. Uh, Actually, the uh, film service I was working for uh, put me on with this company, and I was like, okay, I, I don't have no problem with going to Kentucky and coming back and you know what I'm with the money I'm getting paid for. So I was like, okay, that's fine. And then I'd be home every day. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, and man. And then I got to do too much. Oh, what would you say? You got to do what now? I said, and then I don't have to do too much. Oh, well, that's what's up. You know, try to make it easy and make that money. Don't let the money make you, man. Orzel Johnson, right. everybody. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. I appreciate you coming on, chopping it up with me. 
you know, sharing that little story, you know what I'm saying? Uh, do you feel, you know, being that you 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 was able to, you know, able to be the one to, to, to help out in that unfortunate situation, do you feel as though as you as you was a hero in that situation that you was that you was the one that found her and you was the one that called the police and and uh and and let them know that she was there now i don't feel like i'm a hero i just feel like if anybody was on the side of the road uh in their state i would have just don't think i out and helped out anyway you know what i'm saying uh like i told <laughs> the news reporter earlier today, it could have been anybody out there laid out. I would have still got out and helped, uh, try to help and call the police to uh, make sure that the person is all right. That's what's Just that. like uh, last year, the same thing happened where it was just a car accident and uh, it all happened in front of me. And I had called uh, 911 because there was. Uh, more people that was involved at the time. So I I, I was just meant to be there to help out. That's all it was. Well, that's what's up, I don't up, feel like man. I'm a hero. I, you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of us out here don't don't get thanked enough, man. But I I appreciate you, right. driver. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for what you oh, do, right. man. You know what I'm saying? You know, right, you. back in the, you know, back when COVID was strong, we had everybody and a mama coming out. Thank you, drivers. Thank you. But now since COVID is like, it's like kind of letting down a little bit. Now you got these people going back to, going back to their asshole way. So thank you very much, brother, man, for being out here and, oh, uh, and doing the damn thing. Orzel, man, what's, uh, what's next? Uh, What's next after trucking, man? What, what you what you got next? Is, is you gonna you gonna try and retire from this, or you got something planned? What's up? Yeah, I'm gonna try to retire from it and uh, try to get my own business going. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Ah, so thank you very much for coming on. I do appreciate it. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me on the Lockout Men Podcast show. You can do that. You can hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or you can head over to Instagram and check me out over there and hit me up in the DM. If you like content like this and more, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit the bell in that all button. It shows YouTube that you rocking with your boy. And also, if you want to help out the channel, you know, who your brother up with some coffee, you can do that by hitting me up with the cash app. That's dollar sign lockout men. Or you can do it in the coffee app. It really doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? I'm thirsty over here. This is what I do for you guys. I I try to I, I try to give you what you want. I don't know what you want, but I'm sure you guys are gonna tell me. So if you guys want more, let me know and I'll bring you more. You know what I'm saying? While I'm while I'm thanking you, I want to thank everybody else. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for listening. I do appreciate it. Uh, until next time, that's about it. Until next time, everybody, this is Lockout Men, along with my special guest, Orzel Johnson. Uh, I will come back at you guys with another video and another podcast. Y'all have a beautiful, blessed night, and I'll talk to you later. Peace. Yo.